Welcome to today's class which is about ellipsis. Now ellipsis means missing some of the sentence um, you, because you don't need to repeat it again in the same sentence. And we're, this happens all the time in English, so very often we'll say something like I wouldn't climb that tree, but you would climb that tree. But we don't say climb that tree a second time, we just say I wouldn't climb that tree, but you would. And we mean you would climb that tree. Um, so that's what I mean by ellipsis. You very often see it with auxiliary verbs. Auxiliary verbs are used to represent the ellipsis. And you also see it with the preposition to, which we'll look at in another le in the second lesson. I'll, I'll do a series of lessons on ellipsis. So today we're just really looking at than. So we're looking at making comparisons with ellipsis. And there are two, two rules I want you to remember in today's lesson. Um, avoid ambiguity. Some comparatives will be ambiguous. They will be unclear exactly what you mean. Very often there'll be two possible meanings, like in A and B. And to avoid that ambiguity, to avoid having two completely different meanings in the same sentence, we need to use ellipsis correctly. And we also need to use parallelism, which I've spoken about in some other lessons. So you'll see that come back today. Um, so look at sentence number 1a. I have more respect for Kepler than you. I mean the astronomer, the German astronomer. Now what do I mean here? Because there's two different things I could mean. I could mean I have more respect for the German astro astronomer than I have respect for you. It could mean that. Or it could mean I have more respect for Kepler than you have more respect for Kepler. And so it's really not clear, just that on its own, it's not clear if I'm comparing Kepler and you and the amount of respect I have for the both of you, or if I'm comparing the amount of respect I have for Kepler with the amount of respect you have for Kepler. So how do we make ourselves clear? Well, basically, we don't use this sentence. This sentence is considered wrong. And the, the way you make it correct is simply by... Um, well, changing it a little bit. We could change it in the following way. If we want to compare Kepler and you, I have more respect for Kepler than I have for you. We need to repeat a little bit of this part, basically. We need to say something like, I have more respect for Kepler than for you. Okay, so we need to, in fact, I'm not going to show that. I'm going to put for Kepler, for Kepler than for you. Now look at the lovely parallelism there. You've got for Kepler and for you. It's evenly balanced on both sides of the van. And it's very clear now that I am comparing Kep the amount of respect I have for Kepler with the amount of respect I have for you. Um, so that is correct, but that's one meaning. There's a second meaning that we can try and convey, which is where I'm comparing the amount of respect you have for Kepler with the amount of respect I have for Kepler. And to do that, I just need to add one small word. I need to say I have more respect for Kepler um, than you do. OK, so I just add the do to give the other meaning and then that would be correct. I have more respect for Kepler than you do because then again it's parallel. We're using do instead of have more respect for Kepler and it means the whole lot of I have more respect for Kepler yeah or, or just whoa, <laughs> more respect for Kepler. OK, and so that's how we change the meanings here. I hope I've made that clear. I hope I haven't confused you even more. But it's got to be the auxiliary verb do because this is present simple and it's with you. And so it's not going to be does, which would be with he or she. Yeah, I have more respect for Kepler than he does, than she does. That's possible too. But with you, it, we need do because it's present simple. Have. It's not have in the third form, present perfect. It's just have. Um, so that's why we just need a do. And then it's balanced on both sides of the van. And the parallelism rule is holding well. Um, we're going to do the same thing now with this sentence. He's in love with money more than his wife. Now, what do we mean? Do we mean that he loves money more than his wife? Or do we mean that he is in love with money more than his wife is in love with money? 
well we need to add some words don't we to make it clear so if we're just um, saying that he's in love with money more than his wife is in love with money we just need to add an is okay and then that becomes he is in love with money more than his wife is in love with money okay and that is represents is in love with money and it balances both sides of the than and so the parallelism is nice now if we want to do the other thing and say he is in love with money more than with his wife that will make it clear and it balances it well he is in love with money more than with his wife so we need to repeat that preposition again okay and then that makes it really clear it's lovely it's nice and balanced and there's no ambiguity we're avoiding ambiguity so if we look at sentence C he has more money than his dad there's no ambiguity here it's very clear that we don't mean he has more money than dads how can you compare money and dads you just can't they're completely different things and so this one is correct because it's already unambiguous okay it's it's clear there's only one possible meaning to this sentence but with the previous two there's two possible meanings so you've got to change them to make it really clear so that's the first thing avoid ambiguity second thing the verb tense must be the same if it is omitted so here he has more money than his dad has um, or, or sorry he, than his dad does and by the way it is still correct to put does at the end of that and you might prefer it because you might say well that's more in parallel than we've got than his dad does he has more money than his dad does and it seems a bit more even on either side of the than well that's correct also and I kind of prefer that as well I think it makes it very very clear um, I just think it balances it as well we're in a more parallel form um, so uh, yeah if the if the verb tense is is the same it can be omitted and here the verb tense is the same present simple present simple and so we don't necessarily have to use that yeah because the verb tense is the same but that's not always the case look at the next example which is wrong um, the performance will be better this year than last year now the problem here is that this year we're talking about later this year so we've used will be and then last year we can't use will be for last year and at the moment will be is modifying this year and last year it's referring to this year this year and last year and that's unacceptable so we need to change it and to change it we only need to add one word this performance will be better this year than last year was yeah it will be better this year than last year was um, or you can say sorry yeah let's perhaps make it a bit clearer than it was last year um, sometimes you'll just see the auxiliary on the end like that but the performance will be better this year than it was last year and then it's much nicer balance you've got the performance which is like it was will be better yeah then it the performance will be better this year than it was last year and it's nice and balanced okay if you have any questions about this please put them under the video I hope I've made this topic clear we're gonna do more lessons on this topic there's a lot of confusion in this topic um, there's a lot of different parts of speech that we can miss out and sometimes when we can't miss it out so we'll look at that over the next few weeks um, please like the video if you've enjoyed this and and watch the next one I'll see you all soon